Tuesday. Hi, I'm Carrie. This is Patty, and you are joining us live on Studio R12. Hello. So today we have so much fun to show you. We're going to show you our cookbook stands, which masquerade as tablet stands, and they're changeable for the season. So we're going to show you all There's that. So many cool things. There's so many. Like I can't tell you. I've been. Um, I broke my tablet kickstand um mm -hmm. it snapped off because it was kind of flimsy anyway and i've had this laying down to do cooking and all that kind of stuff in my kitchen and watching youtube videos and all the things and having a stand for that would be so much better so um this one is going home with me in about two weeks which one wait which one okay Grapes. cool i'm trying to decide we were talking about before we started i said which one do I need for my new <laughs> kitchen? <laughs> Carrie just moved into a new yes. house. It's so fabulous. Um, so she has decorating to do. So yes, I do. So stuff. we keep yeah. trying to decide um, which cookbook stand, which which signs I need, all the things. Yeah. Um, I'm actually going to start the day with a giveaway. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Um, we have a new viewer. She says catching my first live today. Well and that's done. Vicki Scruggs on Facebook. So Vicki is going to get a Hello Winter stencil. I this is love this style. Brand new. We yeah. just added this one on the website probably last week or so. Yeah. Um, so Vicki, I will message you and mm. we will get this out to you. Congratulations, Vicki. And welcome. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. um, we have a couple housekeeping things. Last week, Dustin, can I have you zoom, zoom me on this a little bit? We've um, got some people, we've got some aces not in their places because yeah. Steve Had to went to the beach. Rude. <laughs> <laughs> but he was the very first person on our live well, today. Well, that's okay. We'll forgive him. So then. we'll forgive him because he's still doing his job. Yeah. Um, but last week on YouTube, we released the Sporky, Sporky, <laughs> <laughs> Sporky Fork sign. Um, and that is a, even if you aren't interested in painting Halloween designs, Learning how to do an ombre with a roller yeah. is something we get asked about a ton. Yeah, doing that fade is what we call ombre, mm -hmm. and that is such a neat technique to master. So yeah. it's 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 worthy. So, so you yes, might yeah. not paint Halloween, but you can do the same effect with other colors. But I will say that's spooky. That's that sporky port. That sporky <laughs> port sign. Um, we sold couple dozen within yeah, the first yeah. day of the release so it is by far one of our most popular designs yes. right now and you guys what we've noticed um, also just to give you updates a lot of you paint to sell mm -hmm. and do that kind of thing or paint and teach and that that stuff um, fall has started picking up like you wouldn't believe on our websites mm -hmm. so make sure that you're getting your fall getting your samples getting your things done check out our videos go to YouTube and you can subscribe and ring the bell, or you can just like like and comment our, on our page and that kind of thing, so that you know where the content is. And there's playlists for yes. fall and Halloween and Christmas even. It's never too early. To, Christmas is year round, I think. Yes. Um, Christmas lives in my heart all the year long. Steve's hanging out in the comments. He said, how dare I go on vacation? <laughs> he also liked the sporky porch. The sporky porch. Um, and then this week coming this so up, cool, we're guys. so excited about this, our Hello Fall. It has the animal print and it has a 3D hello and we used a random fall stencil. This was probably one of my favorite ones that this I've seen. This is one of my favorite things that I've seen in a long time yeah. from us. You yeah, know? so yeah. this is just really fun and so this will be released Saturday. Super morning. modern. It is. Super like on trend, you know what I mean? It's just like, it, it just the whole thing works. There's a little bit of sass. Yeah, and then yeah. a little bit of you need fall. to be like BJ. Take a look at this. <laughs> yeah. um, we have one of our one of, one of the people on our team. Um, she has um, this print on her shoes, mm -hmm. on her cell phone cover, on her um, watch, on everything. And I'm like, do you happen to like that? <laughs> and she was like. Oh, just a little. Just a little. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so this will be on YouTube on Saturday morning. If you don't already subscribe to our YouTube channel, we highly recommend yeah. that. That's where we have all of our tutorials, our playlists. We have... Uh, and there's of, there's hard stuff to do here, like getting a straight line and knowing that yes. right there. That is one of the things, how to mask it, how to do that. So that's just a good like foundation skill. Yeah, and something that we always do in our videos, we sometimes practice mm -hmm. we sometimes don't i did not practice on this one so you had to figure it and out and i had to figure it out and yeah. then i gave recommendations of hey i did this 
that I next did. time yeah. I would probably do this first yeah and I always will show you the mistakes yes yeah. and I'm always gonna make mistakes that's just who I am <laughs> well that's who we both Hello. are <laughs> um, so that is that um, the inspiration for today we a couple of weeks ago did our phone stands and they were so popular. You guys loved them. I can't even, I think we sold over a hundred. Yeah, hundreds of them. <laughs> it, it was and wild. And this is the Samsung Ultra whatever 22. Like, it's like the biggest Samsung. Big boy. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I happened to have thrown my phone out of my purse <laughs> onto the concrete floor and decided I needed to upgrade. But this fits in there with mm -hmm. the case on it. So um, yeah, these are amazing. So when you're doing your phone in your kitchen on your desk, you know, listening, we do a lot of yeah. earbuds here at work um, and stuff like that. It's so nice to have a place to set it up right so you can see if people are texting in or that kind of well, thing. Well, and with, so that one, you can also, we had someone ask about doing it sideways. Oh yeah, you yeah. You can set it on top. With yep. the basic one, you can set it sideways. You can set it on top. I have a loop on the back of mine, and it does not cause any problems. It still stays. Yeah, right and there. the other thing that does a really cool thing is there's a a hole there mm -hmm. for your charging cable to come through, and then it feeds through the leggy spot in the back. Yes. And it does the same on this. On this too, you can yeah. just pop it right in here, and, and it goes and under there and through there, yeah. and that way Super it doesn't cool. clutter your desk. So that being said, our phone stands our tablet stands and then more than some stencils more than a hundred stencils. so we yeah. went through and found more than a hundred stencil no not hundred more than 50 stencils okay that fit our tablet stands so they're the 8 by 13 is what the tablet stand measures mm -hmm. so we went through and found a whole bunch of those and they're all on sale today and I've already shared the link and pinned it yeah and yeah so guys um let me introduce you to what this is um, because I think that this is so so fun. Um, we spend so much time um, doing, like inventing our surfaces. We have a lot of lasers. We have, I think, nine or 10 lasers. Um, and we like to use them. And so we invent things constantly. So it's like, how cool would it be to have a phone stand or a cookbook stand? So pretend like this is a cookbook. Um, so what's neat about this is it has these little page guards so that your your cookbook can't um, you know break out and change its page and do that kind of thing. Let me move that for you, Dustin. And um, so that's super cool. And then this is the biggest tablet, and so that fits on there either direction. So that's really nice and that's super sturdy. So you're not going to be in a mess. Um, I was looking online. Um, we were making sure that our pricing was correct yesterday, um, and we actually were able to um, reduce our prices on a couple of these things because we have purchased a faster laser. Um, so it makes it a little bit more economical for us to do. Um, so that's kind of cool. You haven't heard that in any Ever. supply chain. <laughs> well, any supply chain anywhere right now, nothing goes down. And we actually were able to bring that down out of a little bit of an atmosphere moment. Um, okay, so what's neat about this is this is a panel that is reversible and I have nothing painted on the back. So you can paint something on the back side. So pretend like this was painted on you know, the back side of this. Now you can be seasonal. I can change it from everyday grapes. If that's the theme of my kitchen, I might do roosters, I might do um, whatever, but then I can change it to fall. I can do birthday messages for the family. I could have, and they're super affordable, cheap, 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 um, to purchase extra panels. Um, and then um, what is fun is then you can go seasonal, mm -hmm. and we have different shapes. So this one and this one are the same shape, and then that little square just nestles right down in there. And... And then there's a basic one. The basic one's super fun. But I love that you can go, like, let it snow. We have one that's coffeeology that's super, this panel is super cut funny um, to show off um, the coffee cup and stuff like that. So I'm going to go over here. And we are still in the process of getting a couple of these added. Mm -hmm. um, Heather just got one added, the snowflake one. So I am getting that one in our category right now yep. and getting it put on sale cool. so that if you guys like the snowflake one, you'll be able to get it on sale today. So this one is our basic. So I think this is a really good place to start. Um, I happen to really love scrolls. So I love the idea. I'm, I'm always the 
circle person. I always love things that have round edges and that kind of thing. So um, this one is the basic. I'm gonna take that panel off. So this one just fits this little panel and that covers that up. And it's your absolute basic model. What's neat about this is on the back side of it, it, is, it has a little kickstand. I'm gonna show you how to base um, the scrolls. Anything with a scroll or a kind of a fancy cutout, I'm gonna show you how to base that in just a second. Anyway, but this all, what I love about this is this is all designed by um, Dustin, who's behind the camera today, um, to all come apart and store flat. So you can put this in a drawer, in your luggage to take on yes. vacation, you're gonna do a thing, babysitting the grandkids, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, you wanna have you know, your stand, your, your kickstand, if you will, okay? So I love that it travels, okay? And now I wanna talk one more second about these grapes, these roses, and... Oh, and I have all this right here. Yeah, and then this bird. So this is just an example, and I wanna hear some feedback on this. These grapes, so I'm a designer, not necessarily an artist, so I have a difficult time putting the grape cluster the way that I want it, and Dustin is an artist, and a designer, and he's super brilliant and draws like you wouldn't believe. And so um, he was able to interpret my vision and make this perfect cluster of grapes. And then what we did is we made it into a, a stencil set mm -hmm. that is different pieces. So you do your um, background piece, then you do step two, so they're layered. Mm -hmm. And then you use your dome brushes to make it look like real grapes. So we are going to do a thing about the layered stencils. The bird is a layered stencil. The rose, these roses are layered stencils. So, and they're super easy to do, but they take like a little bit of like talking through it. So we gotta show you how to do it. Um, very difficult, you get this, yeah, let me pick it up. You get this pile of stencils and you kind of don't maybe know what to do with them. So video is super important with this. Yeah. And so we are going to hook you up. But isn't that fabulous that that looks like that? So let me get started on the basing and then we'll talk a little bit more about what's going on here because there's a lot going on in the background here. And while you're starting, mm -hmm. I'm going to do two more giveaways. Yay. Um, we're going to give away the Hello Winter stencil. I have a couple more of those. Nice. One is going to go to Esther Norton who is yelling at us in all capital letters saying, I'm going to go broke if you keep having such great ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, <laughs> sister. So Esther, I will message you on Facebook. And then the other um, winner of this stencil is going to be Lisa Fisher on Congratulations. YouTube. Congratulations. And Lisa, I will send you um, my email address and you can send me your address and we will give this out to you. Nice. And you guys, give Rusty and Dustin a little bit of a heart and a hug and a, and a high five because they are switching jobs all around so that Steve can be on vacation. How dare you? We won't judge him. He just is at the beach and I kind of really feel like I well, need a beach trip. And he picked a really good week to go to the beach. <gasps> yeah, we're like weather, 100 degrees here. That and storms. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. We, we drove had like through three the worst dirachas storm. last night. Just like no problem. Just like mini tornadoes whipping through. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> Good Lord. Okay, so I am gonna talk about how you base coat fancy stuff. Okay, so whenever you have these fancy little cutouts, super easy to get sloppy, okay? And you get in there and then you've gotta fix it and then you're fixing your fixes because then your, your fix gets on the front and you do a thing. So we are going to show you how not to have to fix. And so that starts right now. I'm gonna base this in white because I have these two lighter projects and they need a home. Okay, we are gonna spit out some paint and I'm going to use a jumbo dauber for this project um, and I'm going to use a paper towel. I'm going to use the jumbo dauber dry, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to pounce off over on the side and then just like the dome brush, I'm going to pounce off on my paper towel and offload some of the paint. Um, if you scoop and go, you're going to make a big mess, okay? And then when I pounce over here, 
I'm going to lightly pounce and I'm not going to pushy pounce, okay? There's a big difference between lightly pounce and pushy pounce. Okay, so we just go and I'm, I'm tapping and lifting up. I'm not pushing, okay? And yeah. one of the things that's important about this is if, if you aren't doing, if you're doing your pushy pounce, it is an absolute pain to try to clean up. It's so bad. To try to clean up the little swirls and get a brush in there. They're already black, so they're already clean and dark. If you get it in there, then you're going to have to try to figure out how to A, make it black again, or B, paint the entire thing. Yeah. And, and you could take a can of spray paint sure. and you could paint the whole darn thing and it would be just fine. You know, like that's absolutely fine. And honestly, um, the dauber, this dauber, I almost am thinking that I would rather have my ink sweeper instead because it's skinny and all of these lines are skinny. So we just load it the same exact way. And yeah, see, watch how this base is way nicer. So this is what I'm saying when we say that we show you our mistakes and that kind of thing. We show you how to... Um, how to find a better idea while we're working our way through the process of what we're doing right now. Um, I knew I wanted to use one of these sponges. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize how much I would need something that was skinny instead of fat and round. So now I can pick up just paint right there on the tip. Isn't it interesting how many things there are to know about a simple tool like a dauber, you know, or an ink sweeper. It's fascinating to me. There's so many wonderful things. Okay, so just with that little bit right on the tip there, it really helps control the paint. And why, while I'm talking about this, um, I just passed by something that we have in our warehouse part of our building. I found the cutest little dresser. It's maybe this tall and like that wide. And we want to do a piece of furniture and show you how to, um, how to prep it and how to paint it and how to design it and do all that kind of thing. If you guys are interested, will you please pop something, pop a comment down below and let us know if you think that would be cool. I love garage sale season. Um, one of our viewers said that they would love to see us on QVC doing a little tutorial. I actually have a former um, news colleague who love works it. at QVC, so maybe I'll have to message her and see if they could get so us much on there. How fun would that be? It would be super cool. Yeah, I mean, we try to, um, like, we just have so much fun with these surfaces. Um, these surfaces are so cool, you guys. Like the, the cookbook stand part, to get it off of your counter and get it upright so that you can read the ingredients, the tablet. I cook from my tablet about, I have like a cookbook collection, but um, I cook from my tablet quite a bit. Um, I do too. Yeah, but I mean, I definitely have some favorites. I had to pop a couple of the favorites into our... Thing. There's a cookbook that is a baking lady that, um, oh my, every, every recipe turns out perfect. And with baking, I tend to be a little bit of a freestyle girl, so it's better if I follow a recipe. Um, someone had asked if the layered stencils are numbered. Yes, they are. They'll they say part are. one of five, part two yep. of five, you can't part three see of five. It, but this is part six down there. Mm -hmm. It says part six. And um, these are something that I would definitely keep in a, like a baggie or a thing together just so that you can find them again all as one unit. Um, and we have, let's see, these are the roses. So we have the roses in different sizes. What I love about it is it gives you um, the outline shape so you can base it. And then it gives you an etched line that matches that outline shape. And you can also flip them over if you want to, and that way you can have it be the other side of whatever the detail is. But then it has the etch line, has the number, so you're always gonna be completely correct. And I think when you look at these roses, like if you look at those, you can't tell that I didn't do a stroke rose on that thing. Like this is a good rose, this is worthy. So we worked really, we worked really hard, and Dustin is a bird guy he loves his birds and like look at the detail on this so you can paint a bird 
on your stencil projects and not feel like inferior kind of, you know what I mean? Like it's hard to paint um, things that you don't know how to paint. Um, we've had a couple of comments of people saying that they thought the they thought that some of these were either one transfers. Oh gosh, or okay. two that you had hand painted them. They didn't feel they didn't think that they looked. They're like stenciled. That stenciled. Well, and that's what, and someone else what? commented that like they hippie noodle. That they thought that it what might be too tough for a beginner. And nope, not with the stencils, guys. Stencils make it easy. Like seriously, like stencils are the bomb diggity. Okay, so we're just doing a second layer. What I like about doing these like just really faint amount of paint is by the time I get done with one layer, the next layer is already dry. Okay, so, and you see that that's gonna be basically base coated with just a couple little touch ups here and there after two coats. Okay, and then we're going to go to this area. I'm going to throw this in the water. I'm gonna get out a foam brush. These are poly foam brushes and these are super dense. I don't know if you can get it. Do we still have that torn apart? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this guy right here, wonk, wonk. He's just, he has no support whatsoever in there. And so when you base coat, you almost have to like bend it completely over. You're using the middle of the foam to do the thing. With this one, it doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. And so you are literally using the tip so much more responsive. I feel like I'm selling a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> it self drives when yes. you get started. <laughs> so then with this, you'll come in here with your dry foam brush. It's the poly foam brush. It's how it's built. Mm -hmm. It is definitely superior. Um, and then you'll just come on here with nice thin coats once you get the top done and you will base this. And then I'm going to show you next one of the things that I love about this project. Dustin, can you get in close to this guy? So it's subtle, but there are words and chicken wire mm -hmm. back here. Is that glare good that way? Okay. And there's, so there's all this stuff going on and there's background movement mm -hmm. and like the paint and all of that. But then we've added the words. I'm going to show you how you can get a graduated color. I'm going to use black paint, on a white board and I'm going to show you how you can make that fade or make it strong. Yeah. And so um, let me get this face. You go ahead. Comments and... of people saying that they would love to see you paint furniture, a dresser or something. Nice. So. Oh good. I get to do it. I get to do it. <laughs> I bought that at this yard sale. My friend Linda came to town and we went garage sailing. We big garage sailors from way back when. And um, I saw that little chest and I was like, oh, I'm doing it. They're going to want to see. They're going to want to see. Um, our friend Linda Wheeler on YouTube said she is going to use her stand that she gets for quilt books. Oh, that's, oh, so, even painting books, guys. Yeah, ah, painting books, knitting, crocheting yeah. patterns, sewing patterns. Now my hippie noodle. <laughs> yeah. That's so good. Why didn't I think of that? I don't know. Good that's, that's why we do these. That's, so that you guys we learn from us. you guys just as much as you learn well, from us. Well, and the fun thing about this project, as I had said when I gave you a sneak peek of what we were doing today, is us talking about the basics of these tablet and cookbook stands has opened up a whole new can of worms for us. And we've gotten four or five new project ideas yeah. out of this one. So you can expect that we're going to be doing some more things what I like about the tablet stand is you can get the extra inserts so you can get your insert piece and you can reverse it and you can do all of that. I love that they store flat, but um, I also love that you can just use it plain. And so you could paint these grapes and this bistro and it they, they're flat when you get them so you can paint it flat. It's not like you have to do it when it's in a stand. You could paint the grapes on the thing and then you can stop. You don't have to take it further. Mm -hmm. You know, you just... I think everybody needs a tablet stand. I agree. And a um, the phone stand, oh, for sure, for, for sure. For sure, the phone stand. I use mine every day. Um, Kat says that we have Kat. the Tesla of sponges. Whoop, whoop. Um, Peg says that she does use the phone, she does use the tablet stand to hold her painting patterns. Nice. I, I just never thought of yeah. it. Gosh. Yeah, we appreciate you guys so much. <laughs> Amen. All right, so I'm getting a second coat on here. 
Um, now's a good time for you guys to shoot me some questions while I get this painted and dried. Um, Carol asks, have you done charcuterie boards? I have not. I don't think we have. No. It would be super well, easy. Well, we have with lasers, the... so we always etch them. Yeah, we always etch but them. But we should paint them. But we can definitely paint yeah. them. It'd kind of be like doing the noodle board yeah. that we did, and you would just make sure you want to put the um, food safe wax you would, yeah. on top of it. Yes. So your Clapham's beeswax. Mm -hmm. Let's go here. I'll share that link too. Yeah. This is the Clapham's beeswax. So once you put your painting, if you were doing a baby's. Um, uh, high chair, um, mm -hmm. something like that, where it needed to be food safe if you're doing it. This is called salad bowl wax. It's meant to go with food. And you put, you paint your thing, you do your varnish, you do all the stuff, and then you do your wax on top, and now it's food safe. Yeah. And then you can just refresh that once a year or however often you use right. it. And so a lot of times you'll see us using that wax as a resist to give us to a chip, a chip distress mm -hmm. look, but it's also a really great sealer. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Wax is one of the hardest, um, one of the hardest finishes. So wax is amazing. I'm going to have to give this a dry, so I'm going to blow dry. Sorry about the noise. Rusty, watch your ears. Steve, watch your ears. <laughs> I really wanted to show the technique for basing. Mm -hmm this um, fancy stuff and then I really want you to see how easy it is to control um, your paint with pressure and so that's coming up right next as soon as I can get this thing base coated. Well and while she's finishing base coating I want to tell you some a, a little bit about this collection that we have. So we have four basic um, stands. We have a simple stand, a colonial stand that has a little bit of the, the top edge. This is this one. Scroll roll. We have a rustic one that looks more like a planked surface on the top. It's kind of got that rough edge. And then we have our scroll. So then after that, we also offer some of these with the stand and then an insert. And the insert is like what we have the bluebird painted on. Mm -hmm. And you can buy those. Some of them have one insert. Some of them have four inserts. Some of them have six inserts. So you could go ahead and grab the stand and inserts. If yep. you know you're going to want to paint that, you can grab the inserts individually. Mm -hmm. You can grab the inserts as a six pack. Like we really tried to make it easy for you guys to shop for the different versions of things. Absolutely. If you do um, six of them, that makes 12 months. Yeah. And so that's why we put them in a six pack. And then if you do four of them, that's the four seasons. Mm -hmm. um, if you do, you know, one, wouldn't this be the best um, housewarming gift or like wedding gift or oh something gosh, like absolutely. that? You, we have all these personalized stencils. So you could be like Mr. and Mrs. and give them an insert. They can change their insert, you know, so you don't even have to. Like, oh, it's so fun. Yeah, well, and now... And you can give a gift every a time gift. there's a reason. Yes. Yeah. Well, and now's a really great time for us to be covering this and talking with you about this because if this is something we've had several people say they want to give these as Christmas gifts, now's, now's the time is the to do time. it because if you are going to paint the inserts, mm -hmm. then it might take you a little bit of time if you're yeah. going to paint six inserts with, on each side. Yeah, and depending on your... Like, so my work schedule is, you know, I work full-time and I have a full-time garden. So if I'm going to make um gifts for people i'm going to want to get it done earlier because i don't have time you know so if you're strapped for time then that's the thing but stencils make it also fast um so you can take your stencil and you can like i mean you're done in like minutes instead of days and hours that's what i love about stencils yeah. and for those of you that have been with me through my other websites journeys and all the things that I've done um, you know we had a flood at our at our studio and it, my husband got injured as a result I couldn't film anymore and I couldn't do these projects and I couldn't do them the way that they were so we had already started doing stencils for those projects because mm -hmm. I love stencils so then we just poured all of our energy into stencils for about a year and a half and then we were hooked yeah we were completely okay stencils <laughs> So fast, not hours and hours and hours. I painted one project. It took me, I think before the edit, it took like 20 hours to paint the thing. You know, it was like a very lengthy process and stencils mask for you. 
They, um, they give you the area where you can do your highlights. Um, it's amazing. The grapes are so much fun. Yeah. Um, real quick before we continue, mm -hmm. Elizabeth asked, how many coats of wax do you recommend? I would say just like two. Um, you'll put it on, you'll let it kind of dry for an hour or two, and then you buff it off with a lint-free cloth or a blue shop paper towel, and then that should do it. Um, I'm going to dry this real quick. Okay. Make noise. Making the noise. Um, Alicia asked a really great question. Question: Are the stands, the the original stand mm -hmm. itself, are they reversible? So they they yes. are actually. Yes. Yeah, so um, you could, when you buy that, let me show you um, this. Okay. So the way that they go together. Okay. So I feel like it's a little confusing because mm -hmm. this is like a really weird part. Um, so they go together. This is the back right now. So that goes in, and now that's your ledge to hold mm -hmm. the things. There's your hole right down here to um, put the inserts. If you don't want an insert, the hole just disappears with whatever you're painting it like. Now your back gets this kickstand, and this is what firms everything up. So it has that little notchy thing. Goes right on in there, and it slides, and now you're firm. Now it's super, super sturdy. And then these guys are your page or slippage um, devices. And then if you wanted to, then you take it all apart and mm -hmm. you flip this piece around the other yep. way. And now it's reversed. So if I wanted a white side and a dark side, mm -hmm. um, I could have that. So that's yeah, And then absolutely. what I love about this is we made um, the kickstand into a scrolly bit. Um, so that's a super kind of just a nice, it makes, it dresses up the backside of this stand. These are super popular, um, everywhere on the web. When I was looking at pricing and doing some things yesterday, I was like, oh my gosh, these things are like, this is a thing. Okay. So I'm going to take this apart. Okay. Fold it flat so I can be seen doing what we're going to do next. Okay. Let's talk about, this is a little bit cold. If your paint is cold, that means it's wet. Um, it's a little bit cold, but I'm going to go ahead and talk about what all is going on in the background on this. Yeah. Okay. So on this guy, we have these words in the background. And so something super cool for you to know is if you want to do words as a background effect, then what you're going to do is you're going to use a very soft pressure. You're going to use a color that's close to your background, but I want to show you how to do those words in black on white to show you how much the pressure matters. So we are going to go here. Um, and I want to show you this stencil storage while we're at it. Um, this is going to be an affiliate link because we just don't carry these on our website. Oh, and our website is studior12.com. And this is the coolest thing because this works. I'm going to get this chicken wire out and watch. It just pops right out and it pops right back in. And now we've been adding to this since we started um, doing <laughs> this one's sticky. So it's coming along for the ride. This one stencil is just on these little disc things and it is holding up. I don't know. What do you think? 20, 30 stencils? It's a lot of stencils. It's a lot of weight. Um, so they're super strong. They're amazing. Okay, and I want to show you that's how you punch. We've had a lot of people recommend that you start using the Ranger heat tool rather than the hair dryer. Okay, I have a heat <laughs> that's tool. That's what I right said. I said we it's have like, one. I need we to I need one. to pull it down. Okay, so you just take this little happy planner punch, you put your stencil in there, and you do the hokey pokey. Pop. Very satisfying. And then you have these little pin looking divots and then they pop right on in there. This is so good. I have stored stencils a lot of ways. I also do really like this on the back wall. I don't know, Dustin, if you can even get in there because um, I've got all the cookbook stands. Um, on the back wall down there, there's the curtain rod that's mounted on the bottom of the shelf. We've shown it before. 
Um, and that's also very wonderful. So I'm gonna use the words, pull that out of there. And I'm gonna show you how pressure makes the difference. So I'm gonna line this up. It doesn't have to be, actually I'm gonna line it up off of the piece. So when you're making something fit that doesn't fit, you can leave things out. So I want cuisine and I maybe want mangia. Um, and so I'll just ignore, and I like my cheers. So I can make this go whichever direction I want. And so I'm gonna center that and see if my line is straight. You want your words straight. Yeah. Don't, don't make your words crooked. <laughs> okay, so then we just give it two tapes um, in two different places. If I tape one place, I'm, oops, hi. If I tape one place, it'll fall off. It's gonna curve like that. Okay, so let me get it straight again. And if I take two places, then it's super, super sturdy and it doesn't shift. Okay, so now we'll go into the black paint. Always shake your paint. The good stuff is on the bottom. The whole just settles. Okay, I'm gonna use a dome brush with fluff. Okay, the dome brush is super firm. So um, these are brilliant if you don't want to bleed under your stencils. That's the number one complaint for stenciling is the bleeding under. If you don't wanna do that, then you wanna make sure that you are using a dome brush. The shape of it is curved like that all the way around. And so it doesn't kick paint under because the highest point is in the middle. So we're gonna pick up some of our black paint. Gonna rub it off, we're gonna offload it on a paper towel. And I spend some time with this if I want a faded look, like I'm about to show you, I'm gonna spend more time. If I want a base coated look, I'm gonna spend less time. Whoop, hi, and then you pick up the whole thing because the tape was curved up. Center it again. Tapey tape, tapey tape. Okay, so then what we do is we swirl. What do we do? We swirl. <laughs> <laughs> Too much time with, uh, which, which show is that? It's, oh, the fish one, Finding Nemo. Yes. Yeah, um, with the grandkids. Okay, so now we go here. I'm gonna go with the gourmet, and I'm just gonna swirl. Now I've got black paint on white paint. Mm -hmm. You would think that this is gonna be obnoxious, yeah. and it's gonna be so much contrast, oh, and it's yeah. gonna be distracting and all that. Let's take a look. Right down here, I'm gonna do a little reveal, and now you have this great faded look. So you can do it super soft like that. I can pick up a little bit more paint. This is like one of those, you don't have the color, you can make it faded with pressure and the amount of paint that you load. Yeah, when that popped up on the screen, it was hardly even noticeable. Yeah, you from, almost from like, did you do overhead. anything? Yeah, are you really painting? Are you painting white on white? <laughs> yeah. So now let's do a heavier pressure. So I'm gonna go here into this simmer and I'm going to push a little harder. Okay, and now we'll reveal and you can see the difference. So pressure is everything. So if you need something soft, all you have to do is reduce your pressure and that's going to control your paint. Yeah, and if you, we've been talking about doing a live with for you guys on the background word. So if that's something that you'd be mm -hmm. interested in, yeah. let us know. We can maybe do a five ways, 10 ways to use background words. Yeah. And like I'm in love with words. Um, I talk a lot. Um, we have a whole, yeah. that whole thing down there. We've got a book. So what I love about these disc um, ring binder things is that you can make books of things and you can color code them. So this one's green, this one's pink. I have a red and white one that's Christmas down here. But these are all background words. And some of the very first stencils, this is stencil number. Doo, doo, doo. Oh, this is a combo. Um, we started making them into, this is also a combo. <laughs> Drat, we're going away from there. Okay, so this is like number 500. So we're at 6,000 plus stencils now. So at 500, we were making all these background words. And what I love about this is these are, Frankenstein is its own stencil. 
you don't have to use all of these. They're, yeah. they're one, two, three, four, five, six. It's like 15 stencils here, all in one. And you can use them individually. You could do this little bit right here. You could use a bigger bit. You can make it this bit. So many ways to use these. Well, and we've seen people, a big trend right now on tall porch signs is mixing and mashing mm -hmm. a lot of stencils yeah. together. Which and is what we did here. Which is what we did that here. That was like a million stencils. But we've, I've been seeing a lot of people been getting the four foot uh, skeleton welcome. Mm, yeah. And then they'll Putting put stuff like on top. haunted house underneath yeah. it or spooky above it. And it's That's, so cool. Yeah. This is basically what happened here. And mm -hmm. we show how to do the thing. So up here. So this is spooky is a four foot. This is taking up one of the six foot, so one foot that makes it five foot, and then way up here, we've got stuff above us. Dustin, can you get down there? <laughs> way at the bottom, we've got the haunted house. So we used all these different stencils to make a montage, mm -hmm. and it's so fun because our stencils are reusable and um, washable and all of that kind of yeah. stuff. And then with this one, we just, we had this idea to put all of these together. We printed, I think eight stencils a lot. and then Patty painted. She said, okay, let's make this one. Stencil. Yeah. I was like, we got to just make this one. But it's, we like to do things like that mm -hmm. to show you guys yeah. that yeah. that's what this is. That's it. So exactly. this here, is, I have all this right here. yeah, this is the bistro and then this is the words yeah. and then the chicken wire is in the book of stencils. So then we put chicken wire around it and you just lay it around and move it around. And then let's show you one more thing on here, how to really make something pop with our brush. So we'll offload, you always offload, even if you want it to be strong. And then we're gonna go to our cheers because you know, cheers. Cheers, oh, that would be so cute. Vicki said that she was thinking about making the Mr. Bones. Yeah. With this spooky word oh. instead oh. of welcome. Nice, oh, I love Vicky, that. You have to do that and send us a picture. That yeah, would be so I cool. wanna see. So when you stipple, you get a stronger look. Now, I'm still gonna do layers, so I am gonna hit the blow dryer, I'm sorry. I need to, we're gonna get that down. Um, Dustin, will you remember and grab that? Because I know I'll forget. Okay, give that a little dry. And offload. And two coats ought to do us. When you stipple, you're gonna get a really bold look. The bigger your contrast, the more layers you'll have to do. You guys are the best stencil fans. You should give yourself a little heart and be like, yeah. Yeah. We have a lot fun. of people saying they would love to see a background words. Good, so oh, it's so that. much fun. Yeah, I'll get that on the schedule this afternoon. Yeah. So, okay, ready to see? Okay, so now we've got it three ways. So we have got very faded where you can't even tell. We've got it strong with the pressure and then we've got it solid with like the pouncing and the base coating. So that is how you can control your paint. That is how you can get your um, fancy edges done with your ink sweeper or your jumbo dauber. And I think that those are two really powerful lessons. They are. And I just want to, um, we've had a couple people say mm -hmm. that, um, and we've had some, several comments and questions about this over the past few months as we've been releasing porch signs. We've had a couple of people say that they would like to see this in a four foot. Um, they don't always scale. Yes. Yeah. So if we would make this into a four foot and we would have to shrink it, your words are going to get tiny. Is that correct, mm -hmm. Dustin? And so, if we release a porch sign with only four foot or only six foot, it's because, because it of doesn't How many work. letters? Yeah. Um, the thickness. Um, Mr. Bones needed to be pretty tall to get welcome in there. Mm -hmm. You know, um, spooky had to be like it was. Now, where you can change something like this is you can go into the alphabet stencils that we have mm -hmm. and you can make your own. 
So you could make a, a leaner sign, something yeah. that you put that's smaller, and um, you so you could get the alphabets and then you could change it out and make your own things. I love the reversible though. Yes. Um, everything reversible is doing all the things right now. I think storage and simplicity and all of that is super important. Um, these little guys right here are also reversible. So you can take that and you can paint something festive on the other side. Now you have to keep in mind that your colors would change. So you could flip that over as well. And now you have a blank slate. So two for one, super amazing. Super fun. You guys, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate you. Yep. And we can't wait to see you next Tuesday. Yep. See ya.